what are some unseen barriers or um, issues that physicians or clinicians face that the general population, our patients, are not uh, exposed to? I I'm actually really passionate about this topic. This is the area of work that I focus probably the most in. And um, one of the areas that I think we need to look very seriously at is um, barriers to resident success and, and from an outcomes perspective the implications for the provision of health care and access to health care. Um, students who go through the paces of medical school and residency and so forth you know have a lot of demands for time and energy etc but if you add to that upper, you know underrepresented students of any of any kind ethnically racially religiously etc the numbers are really staggering in terms of barriers and in terms of difficulties and in terms of underachievement i think we do a disservice in academia to have you know, a, a goal of diversity within a medical school or within a resident program and then not do a lot more work around how to retain and how to support and how to promote and so forth. I think that just simply recruiting people in a general way is not the answer. And I think that the barriers that we see now, um, you know, in residency, for example, are uh, complex and ones that are not going to go away. But if we don't address them head on, it, it will impact access, to, it already has impacted access to health care. I mean, I would say one more thing about this, Christine. I think this is a topic that really people often don't want to talk about. And I think that there's a culture of silence around addressing, you know, uncomfortable topics in medicine, particularly in medical education. And so I think yeah, I feel sometimes like I'm waving a flag and saying, like, please listen to this. This is a really big concern. Three quarters of the students whom we work with on any given day or in any given year, really, it are, are students who are underrepresented. Three quarters of them. And that has been for 25 years. And that's the same through residency and it's the same through early career physicianship. And that actually says something important. I think that's the type of research that needs to be done, but I also think those are the conversations that need to be had, so. I was teaching last week at one of the medical colleges where I work, and I was working with a group of M1s, so those are first year medical students. There were um, a, a certain number of students who had not achieved a passing score on the first block exam of their first you know, medical school exam. And over a two-day period, I met with two different groups of students. And in the second group, on the second day, um, I had some faculty that were in the meeting as well. But the students spoke very freely and very openly about what they were contending with. And the goal was to provide them with some pretty concrete, you know, realistic ways in which to self-organize and self-manage their time and succeed. Um, but what they said at the end of the meeting was, you know, three or four of them stayed and said this was so helpful to just be able to have a conversation, a normal conversation about about a topic that's really hard, like failure. You know, how do we talk about failure? How do we talk about underachieving? And in a, again, in a culture of silence, I think in medicine in particular, where it's so stigmatizing to acknowledge that you have failed, and then how you pick yourself up from that is daunting, but if you already feel somehow less than, or not as well represented, or not as well supported, then it, I think, wreaks havoc on, on almost all aspects of your life. It makes doing the very job you're supposed to do, which is be a student, immensely difficult. Thank you.